tucked away in the Christian town of Alkosh in northern Iraq is the nearly fully restored Shrine of Nahum, home to the centuries-old tomb of the Jewish prophet and former host to major Shabbat pilgrimages for Kurdish Jews. The site fell into great disrepair after the last of the Jewish community vacated Alkosh in 1951, following the passage of the denaturalization law. In May of 2016, ISIS attacked Alkosh. Although ISIS had left its destructive mark across the province, the Kurdish army, along with devoted locals, defended and saved the small village, including the shrine. Three months later, the Alliance for the Restoration of Cultural Heritage, better known as ARCH, stepped in to breathe new life into the shrine through an extensive and impressive restoration project. Four years later, the project is nearly complete, and this site is ready to be reopened, not only to the local community, but visitors from across the globe. To assist with this monumental task, graduate students from the Museum Studies and Cultural Heritage Programs at Johns Hopkins University have been studying the site, its history, and its potential in order to provide strategic guidance in a number of key areas, including on-site exhibitions, on-site audio and tour experiences, community programs, and learning, and online experiences. Our team, composed of Tyler Douse, Brenda Mant, Julie Rockwell, and Katie Vecchi, is quite fortunate to have taken on the task of developing online experiences for the Shrine, perhaps the site's most possibility-filled endeavor, considering the vast and diverse audiences that can be reached via the internet. From the beginning, our team believed that a thorough and multi-dimensional community engagement program was paramount to the Shrine's long-term success. In order to leverage online platforms as an effective space for building meaningful connections with a global audience, while also being informative and respecting the shrine, a strong and cohesive theme is imperative. Therefore, the primary theme of the online experience is connections through time. How are we connected to those who have come before us and those of the present? How can we carry this connection into the future? There are many things that are fundamentally human, including the importance of building and maintaining community, spiritual beliefs, and the prejudice that communities show against each other. By focusing on how the Shrine of Nahum has served as a symbol of unity throughout history, we hope to create meaningful connections between people just discovering the Shrine and the people, past and present, for whom the Shrine has loomed large. We also hope to deepen or refresh the connections between people who have personally experienced the shrine and its modern stewards. By focusing on making connections, we hope to expand the community that cares about the shrine and the people connected to it so that its influence can continue into the future. Another major purpose for the emphasis on human connection is to center the importance of tolerance. Our approach aligns well with the strategic guidance offered by our colleagues. For example, the on-site audio and tour experience team has established a similar theme, shared heritage, shared responsibility, with experiences focused on encouraging emotional connection between visitors in the space through the sharing of an historical narrative that emphasizes those connections. Similarly, the on-site exhibition team has centered the shrine as a symbol of hope in unity. As we have shared, our team strongly believes that a multi-dimensional community engagement program is paramount to the Shrine's long-term success. But what does that look like online? Our recommendations center around two interactive experiences that will provide users with the opportunity to not only learn about the Shrine and its story, but also engage on a deeply personal, emotional, and spiritual level modeled after the experiences shared by those who participated in pilgrimages, prayers, and other events throughout the Shrine's history. The first of our recommendations for an online experience is an interactive timeline that will grasp the user and pull them into the Shrine's powerful story. This will begin zoomed out to cover a vast period of time, beginning with the history of the prophet Nahum and the creation of the Shrine in Alkosh, and extending to the recent restoration of the site and reopening. Visitors will be able to click on various hit points along the timeline, zooming into more specific eras. Our team defines a hit point 
as clickable areas within the interactive experiences that will open up a new page to provide another aspect of the experience. The timeline will come alive through the utilization of text, photos, audio, and video. Visitors will be able to learn more about the longevity of the shrine, its importance to Christian, Jewish, and Islamic faiths, as well as Arch's impressive work. The second recommendation for a virtual experience is an interactive map, but this is no ordinary map. This map will provide visitors with an opportunity to virtually experience a pilgrimage to the shrine during Shabbat. While Kurdistan still had a thriving Jewish population, several thousand people would travel en masse to the shrine during the Shabbat season each year. This map seeks to recreate that experience. Visitors will start with a map of the Middle East. They will then visit several areas outside of Iraq, learning about the surrounding cultures, the displaced Iraqi Jewish community, and traditional pilgrimage routes. Additionally, visitors will be able to zoom into Iraq, Alkosh, and eventually the shrine. Again, the use of text, photos, audio, and video will allow visitors to learn more about the area. Further, visitors would be able to take part on a virtual pilgrimage to the shrine, enhanced by the use of oral histories and multi-sensory descriptions to create a personal and spiritual experience. As an online experience, our audience is a global one. We expect to get web visitors from all over the world. A substantial portion of them will be planning an in-person visit to the shrine, so we will need to provide visitor information to them. The timeline and map outlined by Tyler are our primary forms of online experience for our web visitors. They are primarily directed towards audience members who are not currently planning a visit to the shrine and who may never be able to visit, though they should still be enjoyable for people who have been to the shrine. We plan to provide the best multi-sensory experience possible in an online format, using videos taken on site and in the region that focus on the environment. This will help our online-only visitors to have the most immersive experience possible and create the sense of place that is so often missing from online experiences. This will also provide a more substantial link to the shrine for members of the Nineveh diaspora who wish to introduce the site to their children or grandchildren as a way of teaching about their heritage. We expect a good portion of our online-only visitors to have substantial subject matter interest, either intrinsic or extrinsic, they are not looking for things to do in the area. They have instead specifically searched out information about religious history, Iraqi history, cultural heritage sites, or the restoration of ancient buildings. Our experiences will therefore provide sufficient information for the beginner just starting on their knowledge journey and for the expert to maybe learn something new. We are also recommending that the website include an Ask an Expert portal which will allow web visitors to contact an expert on the Shrine's team with questions. Ideally, this email will go to a manager who can forward questions to the person most able to answer them. To successfully design and implement the timeline and map, it is imperative to have a shared understanding of how these projects will attract and sustain an audience beyond one website visit. This understanding relies on the collective embrace of the main interpretive goal, to provide online audiences with opportunities to learn, experience, and engage through connections to the shrine illustrated through time and place. We know that nothing can replace the physical embodiment of a pilgrimage that travelers have taken throughout the shrine's history, or the touch of the shrine's majestic stone walls, and especially the spiritual solemnity that together respects and reveres the Jewish, Christian, and Muslim faiths. However, we hope to create an experience that is transformative in what the audiences know, feel, and do. We want our audiences to have tiered educational opportunities to learn about the Shrine's history and its connection to the Jewish, Christian, and Muslim faiths, and the pilgrimages that emphasize the many spiritual journeys taken the geographical and spatial intersections of connections to the shrine that feature local and regional points of interest, and the shrine's restoration by Arch, and Arch's role in connecting communities across the global landscape. We invite our audiences to experience, 
emotionally charged narratives through multimedia and virtual environments intended to share the many stories of the shrine and its connections to communities. Knowledge, through detailed sensory descriptions that provide a physical experience without being present at the shrine, and a personal spiritual journey that mirrors the physical pilgrimage to the shrine and encourages a sense of self-fulfillment and growth through empathy and understanding cultures across the world. And finally, we encourage our audiences to act by participating in a variety of venues to advocate for the shrine and other similar sites in need of restoration and protection around the world, by providing resources through funding, volunteer efforts, contributing content, or other designated requests for support that secure long-term sustainability for ARCH and the shrine, and by connecting to their own communities in the spirit of ARCH, the shrine, and the many people it touches to preserve memory and promote religious and cultural tolerance. With these formative themes in mind, we hope to bring connections to communities and provide interesting, dynamic, and heartfelt interpretation that attracts a broad range of audiences and information seekers. Our team has created a few templates, which you can find a link to below, and found some examples of excellent maps and timelines. These will help Arch to create the optimum online experience. We are not web developers and cannot actually create the majority of the content that will be used within the experiences. Arch will therefore need several things. We have grouped them into human resources and physical resources. Human resources are people that will need to volunteer or be hired in order to complete the project. Physical resources consist of equipment that is necessary to create the raw content such as video cameras. Upon entering this course, the members of our team started the project with knowledge and skills in guest and online experience, as well as project design. Some of this was a result of prior work experience, as well as a compilation of the program courses. This proved to be useful when paired with the new research and learning. However, there are still areas where we are lacking information. It goes without saying that the largest missing piece of our knowledge is in regards to the information content to be used in the virtual map and virtual timeline. Though we have learned a great deal about the Shrine of the Prophet Nahum, Al-Kash, and the Iraqi Jewish community, and more, we are not historians or experts in the field. This is why it would be imperative for Arch to take the time and resources to appropriately collect the information and data. To help with this endeavor, we have created several templates one of which is about interviews that could be helpful. It would also be important that Arch had a team working on fact-checking, cross-references, appropriate translations, and ensuring the information and messages are appropriate for all users. Our particular team is also missing the knowledge in web design. Creating interactive experiences like the ones we're proposing would require extensive work and experience and creativity in the field. Due to this, some of the more abstract ideas that we've created may not be able to be constructed in the ways that we have envisioned. Another technical area of the project that we do not have experience with is copywriting. Considering the depth of the material, including unique multimedia productions, Arch would need to copyright the website. This would allow for some basic legal protection. There are numerous potential problems in creating interactive, interpretive environments within a website. Addressing potential problems before they occur is an integral part of the preparations for creating online projects. Incorporating appropriate solutions into the plan for both the interactive timeline and map will allow developers to consider all the problems that can be avoided before an online launch, as well as how Arch will handle problems that may come up while the projects are live. We've outlined three specific potential problem topics and offer strategies and solutions to manage them. Digital preparedness and cyber attacks, online visitor offenses via interpretation, and lack of digital engagement. There are numerous problems in the area of digital preparedness and cyber attacks that could cost Arch a loss of valuable financial and digital cultural resources. Damage to Arch's online reputation could also occur if potential problems are not addressed within the project development and implementation stages. These include 
inadequate hardware and software applications with limited expert systems management that result in lost data and mediocre web interactives. Security breaches on website that expose personal information of its visitors and blacklisting by search engines if website is hacked. Lack of attention to providing full website accessibility for all types of visitors and not addressing the digital divide which results in an exclusive interpretive environment. Solutions include invest in a hardware storage and multi-software package tailored to Arch's needs for managing the digital assets that can be integrated with the website as well as in hiring expert staff to maintain the website and its data. Ensure that password and login security measures, a reputable web host, an SSL certificate, and input field protections are in place for optimal, safe, and secure website management. And implement accessibility guidelines into the web development and the online experiences. Consider usability and user experience testing in areas with limited internet access to develop online alternatives and champion a universal access mission. Online visitor offenses via interpretation issues could happen in any time, but can mostly be avoided if the narrative interpretations are critically reviewed by experts during the development process. Some issues would include the use of language that privileges one religion's viewpoint over others unintentionally, lack of collaboration and consultation with the Iraqi Jewish, Chaldean Catholic, and Muslim communities, as well as local and regional authorities, which leads to misrepresentations of events and exposure of sensitive topics or materials, and interpretive content that excludes certain communities that connect to the shrine and negates their experiences. Solutions include, prepare interpretive narratives that are neutral in tone and in language that relate to multiple religions or are religion neutral. Use religion-specific languages, terminologies, and tone when appropriate. Connect to the appropriate communities in the preparation of interpretive narratives so that all voices are represented and ensure that local and regional authorities are included in the preparation of interpretive narratives so that any sensitive information in GIS locations are not exposed. And prepare contingency plans that address complaints and provide steps to rectify various complaint scenarios, both through communications and actions to make content changes. And in the lack of digital engagement, what happens if a website receives no traffic and the investment into the interactive timeline and map do not benefit Arch? This could occur because the general project narrative content is too advanced or elementary in learning levels or lacks effective interpretive engagement. There are limited or no translations of narrative content in multiple languages that are targeted to broad audiences. Or there are difficulties in website or project navigation that create barriers to visitors having an optimal online experience. Solutions include creating multiple layers of narrative content for a broad audience and design easy-to-use tabs or hit points that access varied levels of educational content. Launch the website and interactive projects as multilingual with correct translations and language formats. And design interactive projects with useful and intuitive navigational tools and use UX and usability studies with a beta testing program to ensure that digital engagement is at its most effective before the website and interactive project launch. No one can ever be fully prepared for the potential problems. However, addressing them in the development stages will alleviate many of these outright. The success of this project is multidimensional and will be measured in a variety of ways. The first level of success will be the final creation and launch of the virtual map and virtual timeline. As with many other websites and online experiences, visitors' acceptance or disapproval of the site can be spread rather quickly. With that being said, it would be advised that Arch did not launch the experiences until they were fully completed. This would mean that visitors would be able to fully flow through the timeline from ancient history to today, as well as complete a full tour of the region, Al-Kosh, and the Shrine, 
in addition to participating in a virtual pilgrimage to the shrine. Even more so, the content should be translated into several languages to ensure the greatest number of users can access the material. Both the virtual timeline and the virtual map should have layers of content as well, in order to educate and intrigue audiences of various demographics and prior knowledge. It also is recommended that prior to the website going live, beta testing is conducted. This information would give Arch and the web designers direct feedback about the ease of the site, the visuals, the content, and more. Addressing these shortcomings right away will ensure a more successful launch of the project. Once the website is up and running, it will be crucial for Arch to evaluate the use and response to the website to measure its success. To aid in this, our team created a post-launch rubric that can be used. This again looks at what the users will know, think, feel, and do. Through the evaluation of each aspect, Arch will be able to objectively see any shortcomings that have occurred in the project. For example, audiences should be learning about the region, Alkosh, the Shrine, Nahum, and pilgrimages. They should be challenged to think about how difficult the pilgrimages were and why people were still willing to take part in them. By creating a virtual pilgrimage, users should be able to follow their own spiritual journey and feel personal growth. The success of the project will also be noted in its continuous growth and development. The beauty of the timeline is that new material and information is always being created. As the shrine continues to draw visitors in for various reasons, its footprint can be documented in the virtual timeline. As the world changes from the current pandemic crisis, virtual experiences will become more prevalent, allowing individuals from all over the world the opportunity for a spiritual journey can be defining. Their experiences and reflections can be added to the virtual map. The content can be translated into other languages, more oral histories can be used, photographs can be taken, and more. These continuous changes will be what draw people in to returning to the site. Finally, Arch has mentioned that the Shrine of the Prophet Nahum is not the only site they are currently working on, but is one of the first and largest. The virtual map and timeline can be used to connect to other sites, educating users and sparking new interests. The success of the Shrine's website could be defining for other projects. The generation of these ideas and the creation of this presentation was a collaborative effort in the truest sense. Over the past four weeks, our team has seamlessly worked together to brainstorm, chase good ideas, discuss, debate, and reject some not-so-great ideas, and build something we all truly believe in. Along the way, we divided up the various sections of the presentation to tackle the details. Each group member played a significant role in developing the script and visuals for their assigned portion of the presentation. To ensure consistency in style, language, and approach, we met regularly, sometimes twice per week, to review each other's work, propose and discuss questions, and push forward toward our goal of producing a high-quality presentation that best represents our ideas and concepts. We would be remiss not to give a huge shout out to Google Docs and Zoom for providing platforms that empowered us to collaborate more effectively in a virtual setting. Many, many hours and much brain power went into the creation of this presentation, and we hope you've enjoyed watching it just as much as we enjoyed creating it. Thank you.